Hi there, I'm Kate Russell and welcome to another edition of Chips With Everything, the show where we laugh in the face of your computer problems. Ha ha ha. Today we've got a laden donkey of your games question to get through, so let's see who my able helpers are this week. Carrying the hay bale is Matt Bettinson, new media editor of PC Gaming World magazines. The man who by his own admission plays games for a living. We but all I want laugh in the face of gaming questions as well. You do. Let's see you laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, he's got a ho, ho there. Well, dangling the carrot alongside him is games journalist Ben Priest. Let's see you laugh. I don't laugh. You don't laugh? It's just a rule. You're in the wrong place then. We laugh in the face of games problems here. I get run over by them. You get run over by them. Well, it should be some interesting viewing anyway. Let's begin our trek through the land of gaming with our first question. It comes from Andrew Burrows, who's trying to play Quake over the internet, but has to run into some problems. He writes, Dear Kate and Chums, I've been very unsuccessful in trying to get Quake 2 to play over the internet. I use the GameSpy program to connect to a server. I see myself appear in the game, but I'm unable to move or do anything. I just get a picture of a phone socket at the top of the screen, and my modem transmits like crazy. A couple of players in the arena say, the arena say that my ping rate is through the roof. What can I do to lower my ping rate and hopefully allow me to get online? Many thanks and keep up the good work. Regards, Andrew Burrows. Well, we can't have you just standing there where everyone shoots at you and frags you. Um, can we? Ben. That is the worst thing. It makes, it, is. it makes multiplayer games no fun. No fun. Well, fun for everybody else, of course, but not much fun for you. Yeah, bit of an easy kill. What would you suggest is going wrong here, then? Well, uh, I, I want to try and get back to basics to explain how, how easy it is, really, once you master it, mm. to be able to get low ping for all your games. Actually, first, let's go right back to basics and explain what a ping rate is. Well, important thing, very simple. On the internet, you go from somewhere to somewhere. So you go dink, 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 got there. Mm -hmm. And the ping is how, how long, it's sort of like echo finding, how long it takes to get there and back. Right, so somebody will ping you and, it, and they will measure how long that ping takes to get to you. Yeah. And then they know how fast you're actually running at the time. Yeah, and so if it's in Brazil, it would be a longer ping. Right. If it's down the road, it would be a very short ping. In theory. Now, the shorter the ping, the better. Yes. Because that means it's... Uh, a very fast update in your game. So a short ping is a good thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. And, um, uh, well, the good news is it's nice and easy to figure out for Andrew. And uh, Matt's, in fact, going to give the exact solution. Excellent. We hand over to, in fact, you've just been run over by that question. I in know, well, Expected yes. form. So, laugh in its face, Matt. Well, the thing here, Kate, what we need to remember is that these, gaming, these game servers around the world uh, advertise themselves onto so-called master servers, and the program that Andrew is using here is GameSpy, and it goes and fetches a list of all of those servers and sends a ping out to each one to see how close it is to them. The trouble is Andrew is probably, he, he could either have something wrong networking-wise, not a very good ISP, not connecting at a fast rate or something like that. Most likely, he's just choosing the wrong server to connect to. So it's taking, you know, the server could be in Australia or something. Mm. So as he connects to that, um, you know, you can actually connect to it, but the ping will be through the roof. It'll be completely unplayable and so on. Are there sites that will actually direct you to the closest? Um... Well, that's right. What you can do is you can go into GameSpy and choose to master list update, which is in one of the menus. It's easy enough to find. And then once you've done that, you can add the Barry's World master server, which is the master server in the UK for Quake. Barry's World. Mm. And then all of the servers that you get shown are servers that are in the UK and Europe. And then if you click on the ping tab, you'll be sorted in order of the fastest to the slowest. So you click on one at the top, ah. so long as there's people in there, and you've got a very fast and close server. There you go. Very well explained as well. If you missed any of it, we'll check out our website later on and hopefully it'll all be there. Now, Richard Whitty is having problems getting the bugs out of Half-Life, he wrote and said. Dear CWE, while setting up to host a LAN game of Half-Life multiplayer TFC, my computer picks up the phone and starts dialing some computer somewhere. The only way I can stop it is um, doing this is to unplug the modem from the phone line. When it gives me the error message, I press escape and then it loads up as it should. That bug was apparently corrected in version 1.0.0.8. Point. I now have version 1.0.1.3. And it still happens. The people who join are stuck in their original positions. They're able to turn left or right, but still no movement forward or backwards. How can I sort this out, Richard Whitty? Well, Richard, we'll certainly try for you. Um, who should we go to? Ben, I'm going to give you half a life back on this one, because okay. it's a question about half life. Oh, very good. Is <laughs> it, actually, it's a game I play online too. Is so it? Hopefully I have got some advice. Um, first of all, 1.0.1.3 is the latest version at this time. So 
nothing's been done wrong there. Mm -hmm. I think the first problem was that he was dialing up when he didn't want to. So he was going to play on his network at home. Right. And that does not involve using your modem because you're not going outside onto the internet. Right. So we, we need to find out why it's dialing up. So do you think that may be setting somewhere within his computer that tells him to dial up every time he launches it's that? It's actually a, a Windows IE5 thing and not Half-Life. So Half-Life's being fine about it and it's Windows. So you need to look for the auto-connect part of dial-up networking. And I think it's in Internet Options as, as one of the options there. So you go into Internet Explorer, go into Internet Options, yeah. and then you actually deselect for it to connect automatically as soon as you launch. Yeah, and that way it won't try and use the modem whenever you try and play, do something locally. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good answer so far, Matt. Have you got anything to add to that? Or no, do you think that will right. work? You can also get to these controls through the control panel and the internet options, and there's a little tab called connections, and one of those will be highlighted. Half-Life tries to connect to a master server to authenticate, and as it's doing this, you know, it's trying to dial up on the modem because of that. Turn it off, it'll be fine. Okay, excellent. Half-Life is a game, is it? It's a game that you play as well? It certainly is, although I play the TFC variant of it, which comes with that package. It's a team play variant of it. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. There's lots of tips to be picked up here, isn't there, on our particular gaming night. Anyway, there you go. Um, there's your answers. Good luck with that, and I hope you manage to get your Half-Life gaming up and running again. Now, George McKay's 3DFX card is giving him problems. He says... Hello, Kate and the CWE crew. Um, I have a Pentium MMX233 with a Matrox Mystique graphics card and an Orchid Righteous 3D FX card. The problem is that when I upgraded my computer with the latest version of DirectX, version 6.1, I found that my 3D FX card does not work properly. Um, when I load up games like Half-Life, I have a lot of white lines running up and down my screen. I've tried updating my drivers for both the Matrox and my 3D FX card, but this hasn't solved the problem. Any ideas, George McKay? Any ideas? I don't know. Ben, any ideas? Well, it's, a, it's a bit confusing one, this one. It, it worried me because of the white lines thing. You get worried by white lines, Well, you? Uh, in this case, it could mean that the card's actually broken. Really? I, that, well, that's one impression I'm, I'm now getting is a nagging feeling. Really? Because if, if you get it's if it looks like corruption on the screen, as in if it's printed on top of your normal things, if it happens in Windows and in games and in Half-Life, then it's probably the card at fault. Ah. Now, there's not really enough info from George here to tell whether it is, because he didn't say if it's fine in Windows or not. Right. Is it one of these things where, um, with cards, uh, sorry, if you don't necessarily know whether there's a problem, is it, is it maybe a good idea to go back to the manufacturer? Would he be able to get a new card swapped or get it fixed? What's the situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't, because the simplest thing that happens is they say, sure, send back the card, they send you another. And if you're getting the same problem, well, it's obviously not the card, Right. Which will either point you at the motherboard or the drivers. Right. So, I mean, one thing is that it could be the card. So hopefully it's still under warranty and you can actually get that done yeah. free of charge. Yeah, but George said, you see, he'd, he'd got the latest drivers. So I think right. it could well be a hardware thing. Oh dear. Would you agree, Matt? It's looking like that. I would say that it would looks like the 3DFX card because he says it's only doing that in the games. And because it's a voodoo card and it uses a pass-through cable, it switches over to that card as soon as you play a 3D game might be worth going into Half-Life and trying to use one of the other graphic modes. It's, also, it's got software, regular OpenGL and 3DFX OpenGL and D3D. Trying one of those might eliminate the problem or s sort of point the finger at what could be the problem. And that's your options in Half-Life? Mm. Okay, excellent. Well, again, a couple of solutions there for you. You've got so many different things to try. I hope one of them works, at least. So good luck with that and let us know how you get on. Now, Ian Shaw is not sure whether to do a voodoo or not. He wrote to us and said, Dear Kate and CWE, I currently own a Voodoo 2 8 meg graphics card and I wish to upgrade to a Voodoo 3. Unfortunately, my motherboard has an onboard AGP graphics processor with no AGP port. Is the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI worth purchasing or should I go for a new motherboard with an AGP port and the purchase of a Voodoo 3 3000 AGP? Is there a great deal of difference in the performance? Cheers, Ian Shaw. Well, cheers for your question. I like these kind of questions because not necessarily problems, are they, Matt, but more asking our opinion about what's available. And we all normally get to learn quite a lot. So go on. It's Fill an our easy heads question. with knowledge. <laughs> yeah. um, Kate, there's a few, there's a, there are a couple of potential problems here. This is one of those motherboards that's got the graphics card on it, actually, rather than being a plug-in card. So in order to plug in another graphics card, you have to go into the BIOS, which is a funny 
where you go into settings, press um, delete or something as you're booting up. There'll be a message on your computer That's screen right. as it boots up, won't there? And you have to go in there and get it to disable what's on the motherboard. Now it is actually possible that you can't disable the onboard graphics, in which case the only option is to change the motherboard to change the graphics card. Right. Um, ben and I talked this over with a particular specification and we think it's probably better off, you know, you could get that card, but wait, the next thing to do is to change the motherboard and CPU to upgrade later on down the line. Really? So you think it's time just to sort of like start planning and making that particular move? Um, any particular sort of like kit caught your eye coming up in the future that might be good buy? There are some fairly stonking graphics cards just coming up around this this area of the year. Um, some of those are going to be incredibly fast, very high resolution and look absolutely stonking. But you'll need an AGP motherboard. There'll be no hope of a PCI card in those cases. Right. So AGP, pretty much gamers, we're saying they should probably look at AGP if they're upgrading their motherboard anyway. Absolutely. Yeah? Ben, anything to say? Well, uh, you're right there, AGP is always best. Yeah. And I would give uh, Ian two routes to go. One, get that PCI Voodoo 3, perfectly nice card, you'll like it. Uh, and then, or alternatively, look to upgrade in about six months' time to a new motherboard and these really nice new cards that are coming out then. But do make sure that you can disable the old um, card before you, on your motherboard. Before. Well, if he buys the Voodoo 3, it'll work, oh, the right, PCI okay. one. Oh, okay. But if he threw it out and got a new motherboard, he could have these newfangled ones. Newfangled and stonking, all such technical words we're using here today. Um, lots of different suggestions there for you. You're going to have to decide for yourself which one is best for your particular needs. Good luck and happy gaming. Now, finally, Bill Colton is getting a blue screen. I know that feeling. He wrote to us and said, Hi, Kate and team. I currently have a P300 with their Voodoo 2 12 megabyte graphics card and Windows 98. When I go into display, it often goes to a blue screen, saying that a fatal error has occurred and that I should press any key to continue. By doing this, it goes back to my desktop, but everything runs slow and I have to restart my computer to make my computer work correctly again. I then reinstalled Windows, thinking it may be just the bug in the system, but the problem was not solved. Have you any idea? on what the problem is. Thanks in advance, Bill Colton. Well, Bill, again, you seem to have done an awful lot of the things we might have suggested. Um, ben, doesn't he? He yeah. seems to have done a lot of them. Yeah, I think, in fact, we shouldn't blame Windows this time, because I think Windows is fine, and the 3DFX card is to blame. Really? Yeah, now, now ah. what, what the cards have started doing lately, and this is 3DFX and NVIDIA, is they sort of hook into Control Panel. And um, you know when you do the display properties in Control Panel, you get screensaver, background, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What they tend to do now is add their own tabs so that you can see, it does a snazzy logo, and it says, I'm running in this mode, and this is the version of the driver. It's just adding extra bits. Right. And I think this is what the problem is in this case. Right. The 3D effects bits that are added into the control panel. OK, so how do we actually get over that problem then? Well, in theory, I think uninstall the drivers for the 3D effects card and bung it back on and it'll be fine. I, I think that might work. Okay. At worst, take out the card, plug it back in and reinstall everything. That might do it. Right. Matt, you're nodding sagely. Could be leftovers as well. It's one of the really annoying things about a lot of these cards is they add these tabs in there and after you take out that card and you put in the latest card or whatever, it leaves that tab in. Most of the time they're fairly well behaved and they'll sit there useless but they won't crash when you go in. What's happening here is as you open that screen properties up, the display properties, the tab's called, it's crashing. And that could be also a tab from an old card that's still on the system. Uh, that's not uncommon. So uninstall all the drives for all the cards and then reinstall the driver. Right. You can get your hands dirty and delete the files, but it, it's hard to know what they are. If you had the original drivers, you could find it. It would be the one with the .cpl on the end and you could find it in Windows. But going a bit the complicated yeah. route. Uninstall those drivers, reinstall them again, hopefully that will sort out your problem for you. If not, there's a couple of other options that the lads there suggested. Um, if you missed any of them, look at our website later on tonight. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but don't forget to keep those questions coming in. If you've forgotten or you're a newcomer, our address is cwe at sky.tvchannel.co.uk or you can write to us the old-fashioned way .tv PO Box 24121 London SW18 1WN We get hundreds of letters but I promise we do read them all on us so please put as much detail as possible about your computing problem Well our nomadic herders have come to the end 
of another journey. There's a few more seconds left for me to thank our expert for today and hope that they will join us again very soon. Will you, fellas? Because I love having you two gamers here in with me. Oh, we, we love it too. Excellent. So more gaming nights to come in the very near future. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>